Hi, welcome to Inkscape for Teachers. I'm Jeff Phillips. In this, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to produce a cone. There are a few little tricks here, um, depending on how accurate you want to be. But uh, Let's start with a blank canvas. The first thing I'll do is produce a line with the Bezier tool. Click. Holding down control constrains 15 degree increments, but uh, double click to finish or click and enter. Select tool. Bring up the stroke and fill or fill and stroke menu and change the width to 0.5 millimeter. Select tool. Yep. Uh, now control D to duplicate. Reflect in a vertical axis. Hold down control to drag it along and you might see it snap to cusp nodes there. If it doesn't do that, turn on the snap to cusp nodes tool up in the snapping toolbox there. I'll click away. Actually, I'll drag a marquee to select both. And while both are selected, I'll click the Nodes tool and drag around this top node, which should select two of them, and join them by clicking that third icon along there. I'll go back to the Select tool now and drag. It's all connected together. OK. Now I'm going to draw an ellipse using the Circles and Ellipses tool, approximately the right size for the base. Um, just do it to your liking. I'm going to remove the fill by clicking this uh, red cross in the white square here. I'm going to change the stroke to black by holding down shift and clicking black. Just checking the width is 0 0.5. I'm actually going to change that to 0 0.4 because that helps it uh, hide behind the slightly thicker sides of the cone for a bit more accurate diagram. Enter. Click away. I'm going to drag this roughly into position you see it's trying to snap there. I actually don't want it to snap because I'll, with it snapped, if I just zoom in, control and mouse wheel, can you see that uh, this area here, it's inaccurate. You can see that the back of the ellipse is actually outside the straight edge of the cone, which doesn't look quite right. So I'm going to go back and turn off the snapping to cusp nodes up there. So if I drag now, it's not going to snap. But just try and eyeball it. Uh, actually, before I do that, uh, look, I'll get it a bit more accurate by you know, dragging this in into here. Now, if you're happy with this, you can just sort of drag it like that and be done with it. But you can see, again, if you zoom in, it's you know, not perfectly accurate there. So what I'm going to do is to break up this ellipse into two because I want a dotted back section and solid front section. So to do that, again, I'll click on the Nodes tool and I'll sh click one and then shift click another. Actually, it's a bit hard to see if I've got the ellipse or the cone. Let's drag it down. Nodes tool, click one node, then shift click another. You see it's not working. I've just realised why. Because it's not an, an actual path. It's still an ellipse. I've got to turn it into a path that has more nodes. You can see it hasn't got four nodes there, for example. And one of them is just a resizer for the ellipse. So I'm actually, while it's there, I'll select it and go to Path, Object to Path. Now if I click the Nodes tool, you can see I've got four nodes there. And if I select one, it stays selected. And Shift-click the other. It's, they're both selected blue there. I'm going to select Break Path at Selected Nodes. And you think that would be enough to do it. But if I go back to the Select tool, it seems still stuck together. So I have to actually go to Path break apart. Now you can see there are two dotted rectangles and if I just click on one of them just control Z, you know, it does separate. Now this back section I'm going to change to dotted using the stroke and fill menu change it to dashed. I think down here something like that. Yep, that looks okay. And click away. Now I might actually drag that uh, control to keep it aligned vertically. I'll actually deal with the bottom bit first here and try and drag that into position. I might zoom in control and mouse wheel and just press the mouse wheel down and drag with the mouse to pan and drag this pretty close and then select both the straight side and shift click to select the base then the nodes tool. You can see there are two nodes 
here they're actually separated if I drag around them and then click join this one here it joins them together it's a bit more accurate I'll pan across to do the same over here perhaps I should have zoomed out and then panned in again but anyway nearly there actually before I try and join them I might actually click that node and move it a bit closer then drag around those two and click join control and mouse wheel out and select tool and that looks reasonably good at the base now I'm going to deal with the dotted line here and well, that looks pretty good actually without too much work but again I'm not going to lock it on to the uh, base because then it came out the sides of the the cone didn't quite look right so I'll just eyeball this under a high zoom if I control click control um, mouse wheel there if I just drag it into position it looks like it'd be right about there but again can you see it's sticking outside the sides of the cone so I'm going to drag it either drag it back in there but by doing that it comes too far in the base so what I'm going to do is click the nodes tool and just move this node I'll move it to here but you can see there's this handle here I can change the angle and sort of hide that make that look a bit better there click off I'm going to control mouse wheel and then go across the other side control mouse wheel zoom in and again if I just select that's the dotted base it doesn't look too bad and then the nodes tool and actually the nodes there it's on a gap if I drag it to there it comes out too far but look I will drag it to about about there but then again I'll use this handle I'll just zoom out a bit to move it the angle at which it comes in click off doesn't look too bad click the select tool control mouse wheel down wipe a bit click off that looks reasonably good I mean things aren't uh, absolutely perfect at these corners here as far as equal gradients and all that sort of stuff but under high magnification um, you get it right and then you can zoom out again in any areas you can't really see too much so that produces a pretty good cone you can label it uh, with arrows and dimensions uh, see my video on the cylinder for how to do that but that concludes this presentation. Thanks for watching.